No, I'm actually going to do width first. I'm going to use 1280 and then graphics that forward back buffer height is equal to 720. So we use HD 720p resolution. Now everything works correctly. Now they initialize. We have the screen manager object. And then we just do add screen. And then we want a new logo screen. And we do not need to make an object above this because we're not going to do anything different. However, if you have additional properties you wish to set before you add it to the screen manager itself, you should do logo screen, logo screen is equal to new logo screen and actually add the additional properties this way and then just add the logo screen but since the way we did it we do not have additional properties so we can just say new logo screen now press F5 the screen manager takes over it loads on waits three seconds loads off and the screen is done so look at the game one that's yes there's absolutely no code in here the screen manager takes over, it loads the screen, it sets the state of the screen. If it's not active, you can add additional pause effects. By the way, the is active means you click a different window or that's not in focus. And then it updates the screens, and it updates the game screen, it goes here. If everything's fine, it'll transition off, it'll transition on that's covered in the game screen we go to the intro screen the update is just lowering the timer if the timer is less than or equal to zero we exit the screen we go to the logo screen and we're just setting the content and setting the constructor so that's all the coding it takes to create an implementation of a screen also, a cool tip, on the main website I have a little blog post and when I get the full series finished I'll create a web page like the basic training series so it'll have all the samples and projects I've released. And the first item on here, or if you're watching this a week later it might be down below you will see a screen manager files blog post and at the very end you will see an example of a implemented screen and if we copy this and paste that in our screens folder and let's call it play screen highlight all control A paste control V and the namespace will be something different. Always change namespaces when I release a sample. Now, the logo screen, we want to add additional screens after it's quit. So, if we public override remove, this is the method that is called when the screen is being removed. And we need to keep the base.remove because that will actually remove it from the screen manager. But before we remove it from the screen manager, and we need to do it before because the base.remove actually deletes the screen manager reference from the screen itself. So we cannot do coding after base.remove. So we just get to the screen manager reference, dot add screen, new new play screen and then here we have it so it'll fade on wait three seconds fade off and then we'll start the play screen and we have a content error because we don't have a font so when I right click the content folder, go to new item, 
and sprite font and we need to name it font lowercase font and then you can just leave it the basics just to make the coding happy and we run it again see if everything's fine once it unloads we have a play screen so the screen manager does it all for you and we added basically nothing to our game on that CS so there you have it pretty long tutorial but you learn in great detail how to implement a screen how to add an intro screen how to make that intro screen load a different screen and all the cool stuff behind those as well so stay tuned for the next tutorial which is movement by keyboard and uh, gamepad the mouse will be later on so hope you see